giant cargo helicopters, intercontinental jets, the only rival to the Anglo-French supersonic Concorde. These are the glittering images that the Soviet aircraft industry presents to the West. The deadly MiG fighters and Tupolev nuclear bombers stay at home, where they share assembly lines and flight test fields with these prestige civil aircraft seen at the Le Bourget Air Show. Nothing here to remind us that the Soviet bloc at this moment holds ready more frontline combat aircraft than all the NATO allies in Europe can line up together. For a quarter of a century, the USSR has maintained a consistent policy of air superiority over the skies of Western Europe. If this potential were ever thrown against the NATO nations, it would fall to men like these from 13 member countries to hold the line. Its vertical <coughs> extension goes from level zero to 4,000 feet. Between northern Norway and eastern Turkey, they would be spread very thin indeed. None of them could hope to do the job for which they are trained without backup from an advanced radar warning and guidance system. The system is known as NATCH, the NATO Air Defense Ground Environment, a chain of close to 100 interconnected sites running from the Arctic to the Near East. Unknown or hostile aircraft entering any sector are located by radar. The information is fed back to centers where computers are harnessed to the task of evaluating information, predicting intercept points, and indicating the most effective weapons for each job. The computer does not take over. It shares out the work between the specialists on duty keeping them informed of what everyone else is doing, taking care in milliseconds of thousands of intricate calculations, the computer allows each member of the defense team to concentrate on what the human mind does best, on the making of decisions. Teaching the men and women of NATO to operate this system was one of the invisible factors in the success of the NAJ story. More than 2,000 of them were trained by NAJCO, and 200 more will be needed each month in the years ahead. You are all familiar with the stages of penetration by unknown aircraft, the identification methods used to identify friend or foe, and the alternative methods of destruction by missile or interceptor. Those stages are reflected in the physical layout of a typical CRC like the one you are manning now. Doubling as your examiner today, I am in the position of the master controller. In the past few minutes, a target aircraft of the Royal Canadian Air With actual aircraft, you can begin the sequence I have described earlier. Our eyes, search and height finding radars are looking for him somewhere inside thousands of cubic miles of airspace. There he is, northeast of Bornholm. Right now, Initiator, you are the first step. Okay, track established. Now it's yours, identification officer. Friend or foe? Any corresponding flight plans? Is it Sterling Charter 56 out of Helsinki? No positive identification. Now I mark him unknown. What about height, height operator?
Has Hyde been requested on this track yet? Hyde find us on him now. There he is, 34,000 feet. Roger, 34,000. Okay, now look at your tow displays. Do you have the information you need? We have the track number, we have the ID, we have the speed, the heading, the altitude. It's over to you, Tracker. Keep on to him. Make sure you don't lose him while we move over to the other half of the CRC. You've got the alert weapon assistant. Let's have some reaction. Tracker is still unknown. We need positive identification. Scramble for intercepts. So, fighter allocator, which of your available interceptors will you call on? Exceptionally today, for the purpose of this exercise and to test these installations, a wide range of Allied aircraft are standing by. What's your choice? You have a computer, use it. Computer shows missile fastest for known hostile. But to identify this unknown, British Lightning at Air Base 38 shows shortest time to intercept. Air Base 38, scramble for identification, heading 090, altitude 34,000. are getting airborne, let us consider alternatives we could take in an established alert condition under actual attack. In that case, missile battery 8 could do the job fastest in 3 minutes 50 seconds. That side could happen if the Atlantic Alliance were ever attacked, something NADGE is designed to discourage. But let's get back to the immediate problem of how to identify an unknown aircraft by visual sightings using fighter pilots scrambled from the ground. Fighter allocator, are you in radio contact with your interceptors? Roger, interceptor controller has contact and mission is on the way. Foxtrot got three to have you. We have contact. Heading zero nine zero. Climb to thirty six thousand. Speed one point two. Roger, understood. Heading zero nine zero. Altitude thirty six thousand. Accelerating one point two. Foxtrot Golf 32, now turn starboard 250, descent 34,000, decelerate to point 9. Target will be dead ahead 10 miles, proceed intercept for identification. Have contact. Target is Canadian F-104. Target serial number is CF-796. Roger, serial number CF-796. Well done. Pigeons heading 210 for return base. The RAF Lightning turns for home, but day in, day out, aircraft of the NATO nations repeatedly go through intercept patterns common to every country, yet followed through in every language. Like the anti-aircraft missiles that would be used for self-defense, the national aircraft are put on target by national mad teams.
but sometimes NATO air defences are put to the test by unknown aircraft that are not allies exercising the system. Like this Soviet Bear. With a range of 5,000 miles, the Tupolev 20 carries anything from cameras to standoff nuclear bombs and anti-shipping missiles. Its radomes and blisters are outward signs of advanced radar equipment used to probe every inch of the defense systems of NATO countries, systems that directed this RAF lightning onto the bear. Inside every sector, standard routines are followed by men and women who have learned to use the computer as a tool, a tool that reduces the opportunities open to an aggressor. As NAJ establishes clear-cut boundaries across the sky of Europe, it increases the defence options of those that seek to keep the peace, thanks to Operation Skycheck.